Welcome back to DXB Today. Tonight, we are talking all things tech and technology behind getting food to our tables and on our plates. So I'm so excited to introduce our next guests tonight. They are founders highlighting the growing demand for premium culinary experiences in the city by offering the ultimate event catering marketplace. Please welcome to the show co-founders Sarah and Philip Dupuis. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming on. I'm so excited to learn more about you cater. Tell us what the concept is. Okay, so in a nutshell, um, UKTER is really a marketplace of F&B solutions for the event industry. Um, when we talk about the event industry, we look at it from a very wide angle, uh, being your uh, Valentine dinner, two people, one private chef, to the large public events. Uh, so we create the whole, uh, the whole spectrum of the event industry, and when we talk about F&B solutions, it's from the private chef that uh, you can have at home to the food trucks, to the caterers, uh, fine dining outlets uh, that would basically uh, reproduce a pop-up restaurant experience in your own home. Amazing. I'm just curious, is this like a package where you just click, okay, it's package A, B or C, or is this a more curated experience? So, um, so the whole platform is curated and all our providers, uh, partners, mm. as we call them, uh, are fully vetted. Um, and you have two routes to basically organize your, uh, your events. Uh, you have the customization route, where you basically tell the, the platform what are your requirements, type of cuisine, number of people, date, etc. Then all these, these criteria are pushed to the relevant providers and they can access all these uh, inquiries through a dashboard that they have access to. Uh, and on the dashboard, they can chat uh, with the client, exchange uh, videos, pictures, they can even call the direct call. Um, and the other route is the all-inclusive, fully curated experiences um, where you basically have, uh, let's, I don't know, you want Mexican food, uh, well, you will have your 20 people, you will basically add 20 people to your basket and the whole experience will come to your home. Uh, with the chef, with the kiosk, the people cooking, everything, and that's it. You don't have to do anything. Sounds a bit too easy to me, doesn't it? <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> I wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> so, um, how, how much time do I need to, beforehand to be able to curate an experience? It's, uh, it all depends on the, on the, the partners you want, but uh, typically you would need uh, more than a day. Uh, usually three days before the event is, is good enough time. That's excellent. Um, sometimes you can plan it uh, even uh, 12 hours before. This is Dubai, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be ready 12 hours You've before. You've got to be quick, agile. So Sarah, like, yeah. would you, have you noticed that most of your clients are coming from private parties, weddings? Are you seeing a lot of corporate clients? There's actually a really nice mix of both. Um, so initially there was quite a lot of traction on the private side, people hosting birthday parties, um, small gatherings, um, and like just smaller events, but now actually we're having quite a bit of corporate inquiries. We're doing corporate breakfasts, launch-ons, brand activations um, for real estate companies even, where they invite their sales team in and they need some food to go along with that. But actually even all the way up to like big public events. So we've actually created the F&B area for the STEP conference in uh, Dubai Media City, um, Dubai Internet City, sorry. Uh, in February, and that was over 8,000 people, and we just provided um, the whole F&B offering, actually, of the whole event. So, and there is some other interesting uh, public events in the pipeline this year. So, we like to hear that for yeah. the future. We like the future. Yeah, Sarah, what about why? Why did you start UKTA? Was there a, some ca kind of gap in the market that we should have known about? Um, absolutely. So, I've been in finance for a really long time. Busy mom. And every time I wanted to host something at home um, with friends, be it like for my kid's birthday, etc., it was such a struggle to actually f like find the right caterer, who is available, who does what. Um, so we were just thinking like, why don't we set up something like this uh, ourselves? And uh, But the tech part of it is really important, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because that is Absolutely. so, as far as I know, Omar, so unusual from a, a catering perspective, mm -hmm. if you like. No, it's, look, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's the way to scale. Um, and I think that uh, uh, it's also the way to basically 
uh, help our partners to reach uh, to reach a, a new audience. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our partners don't have the the sales team to basically go and, and pitch to corporates, um, and so it's it's a great tool for them. Uh, and being, a, being having this dashboard and being able to see everything that's going on is great as well. Um, and for uh, for corporates, it's great to go through us because we are their procurement arm. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the one point of contact. They go to us and we provide them with multiple quotes. Every corporate needs at least three different quotes. Uh, and so we satisfy, we tick that box basically. And if I may add, we're trusted for best price. Mm -hmm. So in essence, the customer actually pays the same thing as going directly to the provider. So it's a no-brainer. Now, since yeah. you're talking about partners and providers, how is it that you choose the people and the, the businesses that you partner with? Do they come to you or do you actually uh, outsource them uh, yourselves? Or? So uh, initially, we actually uh, went out and, and basically leveraged our, uh, our F&B network uh, in the region. Um, and uh, so we, we actually go out and, and meet with uh, all, all our partners personally. Uh, we go in the kitchen, we try the food, we uh, obviously we, there's a lot of uh, due diligence that's being in done. Um, and, um, and when we started, so we went to the obvious ones that we know well. Uh, they loved the idea, so they went on board straight away. Um, and now, I mean, with the, the reputation that we have, we get a lot of uh, incoming inquiries uh, to partner with us. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Have you faced any challenges, do you think, in trying to bring a new kind of business concept like this? And I guess, Omar, I'll ask you the same question because it's, it's kind of new as far as I can understand in the region. It is, it is new um, and we're talking about it uh, with Omar before the, before the show actually. It's, uh, it's about putting the right message across. Um, basically, you have, a, you have an audience and you need to hand, hand, uh, handhold them uh, to explain exactly what you do. You're not, we're not a catering company. Uh, we're a solution where basically you can see everything that's going on in the market mm. and, you, and, and you know that whoever is on that platform is reliable, has the capacity to deliver the, operation, the, opera the right operations behind it and, um, and uh, that uh, they can uh, basically uh, book any caterer, not just one caterer. That's what you like to hear, isn't it? Yes, of course. <laughs> mm. well, oh, it sounds fascinating. Sarah, Philip, uh, it was really good to have you on the show today. I mean, as a busy mom myself, this is great. <laughs> I know already who I'm going to reach out to for Amazing. my next uh, party. I already no. have one in, 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 in a week from now, so. Great. Yes. Okay. okay. There you go. Perfect. You talk. Yeah. <laughs> Download the app yeah. and yeah. your next no, clients are right here on this couch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's, it's an app as well as on yeah, the... Yes, yes. And actually, that's a quite important point. It is an app. And because you will then exchange directly with the, with the partners, through the app, you get the, the push notification, basically, in order to engage uh, much easier. It works as, as any messaging uh, uh, app. Excellent. Oh, perfect. Mm. It's even simpler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, thank you again, Philippe and Sarah. Thank, thank you for you. joining us. Thank and today's spotlight is on a kitchen equipment manufacturing company offering custom stainless steel products and quality services for food production. One of the region's leading manufacturers in the food industry, this is Ahmed Suhail from Al Nasib Kitchen Equipments Manufacturing. Hi, my name is Ahmed Suhail. I represent my company, Anke. We design, fabricate, and install stainless steel commercial kitchens and front of house display counters for the likes of premium cafes. We manufacture European standards display counters in the factory that we have based in Najman. So any premium cafe owner who is coming from any different part of the world and establishing their business in Dubai, they don't really have to go to Italian manufacturers to have their front of house cake display, chocolate display, ice cream display counters manufactured. Since we manufacture the same quality of products, and also since our business is based in the same country, we can offer improved lead times to execute the projects, and also the cost is going to be very affordable. In terms of milestones, we have collaborated with brands like Tim Hortons, because we have been executing a dual temperature display counter for them for the past uh, three years running. We have, we have already implemented cross, cross to 250 plus display counter installations for all the Tim Hortons, all the new Tim Hortons that is opening up. 
Dubai is definitely an ideal place to do business because we've got a plethora of people coming and living here as a community, different cultures, different backgrounds. And as I said, Dubai as a city is always futuristic. It always wants to be the first in terms of executing any latest technology and any latest innovation there is. So being in a city like Dubai always gives you exposure to new industry trends that you can implement in your own business. And if you can win in Dubai, I am 100% sure that you can win anywhere else in the world. First thing will have to be the culture. The Marathi culture is uh, pretty interesting. Number two is the safety. You always feel safe and secure at any point of time in the day and during the night, whenever you're out in Dubai, be it be any gender. Um, and uh, the third thing would be the ease of doing business. So Dubai is pretty, very easy to set up a business and you know, scale. So ease of business, ease of running business, the security and the culture. So these are three things which I love about the city. Actually, absolutely fascinating, Al Nassib. It was lovely to hear from them in our spotlight today. Right, it is time for tonight's roundup. Faris, what's going on? I'll tell you what, Dubai is exploring some very interesting innovations with ideas at the Food Innovation Conference to ensure food security in the future food tech valley, helping feed local markets, which will see an entire area in Dubai's El Warsan turned into a zone for producing food. The UAV drone, another innovation, will support sustainable food production through drought monitoring and crop scouting as well to facilitate efficient use of fertilizers and precision agriculture. And I know, Amar, you're all about the food tech, the Absolutely. technology. What exciting innovations are coming in terms of not only providing us with delicious meals, but providing the less fortunate with, uh, with more sustainable ways of eating? So there's, there's a lot of really beautiful things happening and actually some of them are, are registered and, and are coming out of Dubai. Um, some of them are building hydroponic systems that you can put at home. So you can make your own cherry tomatoes, Amazing. your celeries, your parsleys and all of that. So uh, in the near future, you will be able to grow your own fruits and vegetables inside the house because you know wow. our weather is not the best always for, for, for outdoor. But we are also finding more and more fruits and vegetables from across the globe that is very uh, capable of growing here in the UAE. So the world becoming smaller is helping us find more and more of the items that we can use. Well, I did hear something once, that there is enough food being produced on the planet that everyone will have plenty, but a lot of it gets wasted, a lot of it gets thrown away, uh, and the logistics of getting it around is the problem. Yeah. Is that something that we're, we're working on? Because I know this is your field. This is very much a, a huge passion of ours at Watermelon. We do not like to see food wasted, especially with what's happening in the world, and, and, and therefore this is something of a, of a great uh, uh, challenge for us to, to solve, but with our ecosystem and our partners, we are finding solutions. So there are multiple solutions that will take that food and use it as compost. There's multiple food solutions where if you have a large catering event, the food that will be, that, that's not eaten is usually repurposed and, and others will eat it. Uh, so we do have a lot of partners that are working with us to, to help that sustainability. And we do implore or, 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 or ask anyone who is interested or is working in that to do reach out to us because we are very much uh, uh, passionate about making sure that food does not get wasted and everybody gets fed. I love that you're already bringing up food waste because that's what we've got coming up next. Yes, coming up we are simplifying food, food waste tracking with the CEO of an inventory tech. It's an award-winning inventory tech, mind you. And that's all coming up together with some great music and DXB Today.